Hello, VC people. How's it going? Alex here, back again today for another video. And today I wanted to respond to a, a contest that I checked out today um, on a channel that I didn't actually know existed until today. I discovered this channel um, when I was going through videos today. And um, yeah, this is uh, the Record Rooms um, 199 subscriber contest which uh, is a pretty awesome number to do a contest for. I checked your channel today and you've I think you have 220 something subs now. So yeah, congratulations. Uh, I think the name's Brett, if I remember rightly. Congratulations, Brett, on uh, the 200 subs or 199 in this case. And yeah, he uh, had a contest um, for his 199 subs and uh, three questions that he wanted us to answer. So I'm going to give my response in this video. Um, playing in the background is Bob Dylan, John Wesley Harding. This is my 1968 Canadian pressing that I got a couple of weeks ago in Cambridge. First time I've had a chance to play this through and it sounds great. It's a stereo pressing and it's probably the best I've ever heard this record. So yeah, that's what's playing <clears throat> in the background. Okay then, so um, getting into these uh, questions that Brett asked us. The first one was, where do we buy our vinyl? Um, you know, do we go to indie record stores? Do we buy most of it online? Do we go to thrift stores, charity shops? That kind of thing. And I have to say for this question, um, I'm not really one of those people that has a specific store that I go to or a specific place that I shop for records. It really does depend um, on what I'm buying. Um, if I'm buying new records, then I'll, I'll tend to check out the price that my indie record store has it for. And then I'll check, you know, maybe what it is on Amazon. I'll check what it, other online vendors have it for. And I'll kind of do it that way. So it's kind of like a process of elimination. And, um, you know, I have, uh, we have an indie record store here in Oxford where I live. And uh, it's pretty good. I mean, as far as record stores go nowadays, it's, it's pretty good. And uh, it's probably one of the best ones I've I've been to and they stock you know a good selection of vinyl and they have a, a lot of good new stuff um, but I tend to think it's a bit pricey and often records they have in there for you know 20 25 pounds I'll be able to find the exact same record on Amazon for well not half the price but maybe 10 to 15 pounds so it's it's kind of yeah it's it's difficult I mean um, I do like supporting my indie record store, obviously, and uh, obviously when it comes to second-hand vinyl, it's it's a different story entirely because I'll, uh, you know, I'll either go to charity shops and see what they have, or I'll, I'll use Discogs or eBay. And I did go through a phase a couple of years ago where I was buying a lot of stuff on Discogs, um, and uh, it's definitely a great place to buy second-hand vinyl. Um, I mean, I found some great bargains on there, and I think eBay is. Well, it's often harder on eBay to, to buy records because, um, you know, you find that some people are a bit vague in their description and they don't have a proper, um, like, condition um, classifying series, um, you know, a proper way to classify the record and, and tell you what condition it's in. So often I find it's a bit risky to buy records on eBay, but Discogs I've found to be very good. And uh, if there's a second-hand record that I really want, or a kind of artist collection that I'm building up, then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go on Discogs and try and find um, a really nice pressing of it. But, um, yeah, in general, especially over the last year and, well, year, year and a half, I've mainly done most of my shopping in stores. And, um, yeah, that's simply for the reason that I haven't really had the money to go out and, and you know, put a lot of money into records and, and be really picky and selective with my buying. I've I've just kind of picked up things that I've, you know, fancied buying or, or seen, you know, in stores. And uh, <clears throat> it's only really recently in the last few well, months or so that I've started to get a bit more selective again. And I'm starting to look on Discogs more and eBay and, and stuff like that. So it really does depend. I like to support my indie record store if I can. And so I really buy from a kind of selection of, of places, a very varied selection of places. Um, <clears throat> but it, it, it just really depends on, on the record that I'm looking for and whether, you know, the places I'm looking have it in stock. 
so that's uh, pretty much my answer to question one. I don't have, uh, as I say, an individual place that I, I go all the time. But um, I go to my indie record store, even if I'm not buying anything, I go to the store pretty often. I, you know, it's just down the road from me, so I can nip down there and have a browse, have a dig, and check out what they have in terms of like new stuff. And they get a pretty good rotation of, of old secondhand vinyl coming through as well. So I often kind of pop in there and, and have a look at the new stuff that they got in. And I uh, don't always buy stuff, but um, yeah, it just depends. Uh, my answer to question one is, is it just completely depends on what I'm buying. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's my answer to, to question one. So the second question was, <clears throat> do, I have, um, do we have an allegiance or kind of um, a loyalty to a specific record store? Um, for this question, I would say that I don't. Um, kind of links back to the first question. I'm quite sporadic and spontaneous in how I buy records. So I don't have, as I say, a, a kind of strict allegiance or loyalty to, to one store. But I will say, since I've started living in Oxford, um, <clears throat> I do like the guys in there and I like how they've run the store. And they have been pretty close to shutting down before a couple of times. And I got pretty worried that they were going to shut down. So. If I can, I like to, when I'm buying a new record or where I'm, you know, I'm torn between buying it in the store here and the store I have back where my parents live, I'll, um, I'm much more partial to buying it here simply for the fact that I like the store a lot more and, you know, I like the guys in there and it's got a good atmosphere and I want to support, you know, the store that's closest by to me, I guess. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't have a loyalty, but um, I definitely have a... I'm definitely partial to buying records in, in my local store as opposed to going home to where I used to live with my parents and buying records there, even though that I kind of did have a loyalty to them back then, you know, when I was living back home with my parents, I, you know, that was a place that I, I wanted to support. Um, but since coming to Oxford, I like the store here a lot more. So um, it's called the truck store. And uh, yeah, I really like the guys in there and I like supporting them. And you can tell, I think it's, it's individually run, you know, it's, it's not um, part of a chain or anything. So the guys in there, they genuinely care about the stuff that you're buying. They kind of start conversation with you. And, you know, you can tell that they're, that they generally, you know, they genuinely care when you, when you buy a record and you, you support them. So, yeah, it gives you a good feeling. Um, but as I say, you know, if I'm looking for a secondhand record that I can't find in there, then I'll go online. And I'll buy in charity shops and, you know, occasionally I'll go to different cities or whatever and I'll buy records there. So I don't really have a strict loyalty, but I would say that I definitely have a kind of tie to my store here. Um, that's kind of the best way I can put it. So, yeah, that's my answer to question two. Um, third question was, um, do we buy anything else uh, when we go to the record store as opposed to just buying vinyl? Um, yeah, I uh, I mean, again, it depends. It depends on how much money I have. Being a student, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty damn broke most of the time. So records are just buying records are a stretch for me. And obviously, that is my main uh, that is my main passion, and that's what I like to put my money towards. So I do have I don't really have a lot of spare cash to spend on on you know CDs and DVDs and books and, you know, other kind of memorabilia, music related stuff. <clears throat> so, you know, I tend to just stick to vinyl when I go to the record store, you know, 99, well, not maybe not 99%, but 90% of the time, I'll go in there and, and just buy vinyl. Um, but occasionally, um, and again, going back, to the, back into the past, there has been times when I've bought other stuff in, in the record store. Um, I buy, um, I, as I told you I didn't kind of buy CDs very often, but I do have a couple of series that I'm collecting from certain artists, collecting the Beatles CDs, and I got these in my old record store, the one I was talking about back where my parents live. Um, so yeah, I'm collecting the Beatles um, albums, and I buy those in my record store. Pink Floyd albums I've got on CD, I buy them in the record store. And also in the past, I've gone through phases of buying Mojo magazines, which um, I bought in the store as well. Um, these are just some of them. 
I like buying the more historical ones, the ones that are like throwbacks. As you can see, this one here is 60s. We've got a Beatles edition here, McCartney, and this one I think is just a normal one. But yeah, I, uh, I went through a phase of really loving Mojo, and I was reading like every single month, and I was, as I said, I was buying more historical issues and stuff. And uh, yeah, I did that for maybe a couple of months, uh, or maybe three or four months. But I don't really buy Mojo anymore. I don't really buy any music magazines. I, yeah, as I say, being short of money, being a student, and having a lot of other costs going out, and being in so much debt, um, I do tend, you know, nowadays just to stick to stick to records. But um, you know, if there's something else in the store that catches my eye, maybe a DVD that's cheap, or you know, secondhand CDs, posters, that kind of thing, then I'll, you know, consider picking them up maybe. But um. No, I mean, it tends to be just records at the moment. So yeah, that's uh, my answer to the third question. And that was the three questions that Brett um, asked us. So uh, yeah, great thread, enjoyed answering the questions. And I think the final thing he asked us to show was um, the most recent record we've picked up in the record store. And I showed this in my vinyl update yesterday. This is uh, In Concert from the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Macon. Um, and after shooting that video, I, I did a bit of research on this, and this actually came out in 1967. And um, it might have been recorded before that, but this is definitely a 1967 um, issue of this. And uh, yeah, this was the most recent record that I picked up in the record store yesterday for just a pound, which I thought was a real bargain. But I played this through earlier, and it was really, really amazing. I forgot how much um, I liked the sound of the Clancy Brothers. They've got a really definitive and powerful sound, and I really, really enjoyed this. It's, it's really great stuff. So, um, yeah, if you see any Clancy Brothers stuff, then um, check it out. So, yeah, that's my response to the Record Rooms threads um, contest, should I say. Um, congratulations again on uh, the 199, well, 200 subs. And, um, yeah, keep making videos. I'm subbed to the channel now, so I'll, I'll be watching, yeah, I'll be watching your future videos. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys, um, and I'll see you next time.